All right, just a quick video uh, further refuting the false doctrine of limited atonement taught by Calvinism, which is nothing more than just Gnostic heresy by another name. Calvinism is a false gospel. Calvinism attacks the righteousness of God, attacks the character of God. It is not at all the orthodox, you know, the historically, you know, orthodox biblical interpretation of the atonement. It is a Gnostic aberration that was brought in by Augustine and spread by Luther and Calvin. Limited atonement is an attack upon the nature of the gospel itself. It's an attack upon God's mercy. Mercy, and also it's an attack upon man's personal accountability for uh, rejecting the counsel of God, for rejecting the free gift of salvation. So here's some scriptures that, you know, and there are so many verses that, that explicitly teach against this, this uh, false doctrine of limited atonement. Uh, the verses that Calvinists like using are just complete eisegesis, inserting false doctrines into the text, because Calvinism is a man-made theology, and Calvinists approach the Bible with a pre-commitment to their tulip doctrine, so they, they will fallaciously insert their false doctrines into scriptures that teach nothing of the kind. Uh, but on the other hand, limited atonement is explicitly refuted in numerous scriptures. So let's get right into that right now. First is Luke chapter 22, verses 20 down to verse 22. We're actually seeing here that Jesus Christ is saying, uh, this is the cup of the New Testament, you know, my blood which is shed for you. And notice how even Judas is present when, he's, when that's being said. So evidently, Jesus Christ died for Judas, even though Judas was still unsaved. Uh, Luke 22, verse 20 down to verse 22. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Uh, but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table, and truly the Son of Man goeth, as it was determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. So Jesus Christ says, you know, it's shed for you. Then right after he says, he talks about Judas, and now Judas is going to betray him. So evidently, Jesus Christ uh, died for Judas. That doesn't mean Judas was saved because he still went to hell. But the, the availability of salvation is unlimited. Now, the application is limited because not everyone chooses to believe. Some more scriptures on the whole matter showing that lost people have the availability of the atonement to them. Uh, 2 Peter 2, verse 1 to 3. But there were false prophets uh, also among the people, even as, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Notice that. Bring upon themselves. They're doing it to themselves. And notice that. Denying the Lord that bought them. Unsaved false prophets here. And, and it says that Jesus Christ bought them. Why? Because the availability of the atonement is to them. They have that availability. Now, it's not applied to them because, well, they're bringing upon themselves swift destru destruction by their damnable heresies. Verse 2, And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. See, their sin is their own fault. The availability is still there, denying the Lord that bought them, but they're bringing upon themselves swift destruction. So you see, they're both an unlimited atonement in extent, and also personal accountability for their own actions. 1 Timothy 4, verse 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is a Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. See, the atonement is available to everyone, but it's actual and applied to those who believe. That's the big distinction there. 1 Timothy 4 verses, or sorry, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4 to 6, uh, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due times. You know? Now, Calvinists insert into this all kinds of people, and they'll make a false comparison of Revelation 5 verse 9. Okay, but then how do you address it right here? Luke 24 verse 47. And that repentance and remission of, remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Um, if you have limited atonement, you don't have a gospel for all nations. You don't have a gospel for everyone. Because, you know, that comparison they try to make all kinds of people, where do you see that in the text anywhere? It's inserted in there. Okay? Among all nations. You know, he gave himself a ransom for all. He tasted death for every man. Uh, Hebrews 2 verse 9. Calvinists will insert their false theology into the text. The reality is... Uh, there is no gospel for all nations. There is no gospel for every creature by Calvinistic limited atonement. It's a Gnostic heresy, plain and simple. It is an attack upon the righteousness of God. It is an attack upon the mercy of God, the grace of God, and also an attack upon the nature of the gospel itself and the nature of the atonement. 
So more scriptures yet further refuting this Gnostic heresy of Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.